Hello everyone, welcome back to GK Code Labs. This video will be about some aspects of large data and challenges being faced on the aspect of data migration to cloud. We will take AWS cloud for the reference in this video, but things sort of remain same for any other cloud vendor. We will keep it as to the point and lucid as possible. Now, what is large data? Specifically for data engineers, the flashing term big data. Its definition is never same uh, in terms of how big it is. The definition is only confined to um, few properties like five V's of big data. Volume, variety, veracity, velocity and value. That's how uh, from a long time uh, we have been uh, understanding the big data about. Now some of you might think uh, isn't volume the size itself? Yes, it is the same. But can you give any quantifiable number to this volume? No. Same goes for other four V's. You cannot generalize them for every use case, never. And that's acceptable because every business has different needs. Now, as in this video, we are talking about data migration. Some quantifiable number is required, isn't it? So let's focus on the volume part only and forget the other four V's as of now. And since it's a volume part, let's call it large data. AWS has given a general number based upon the challenges uh, their clients have faced and uh, according to their knowledge, the preparation that has to be done for uh, data migrations. And that number is anything that has size greater than 100 terabytes or number of files greater than 50 million can be considered as large data. This is only keeping in mind uh, the aspect of data migration because they logged various challenges like what data to be migrated, which protocol to be used while the migration, what, what and who will take the responsibility from the source and the destination side, what about the connection downtime, if uh, while data transfer the connection goes down. In that case, any data uh, which is crossing these limits is a huge challenge. Okay, enough about the definition. Let's talk about the recommended choices if you have large data and you want to migrate it to and out of the cloud. First is data sync. Another recommended service is S3 Gateway. And third one is AWS Snow Family. So there are various uh, devices under this. We'll talk about this in the later part of this video. Let me tell you, these are not the only migration services. There are a lot more. We have transfer family, application migration services, etc. But for large data, as discussed earlier, these services are the way to go. Let me tell you, uh, this data sync and S3 gateway, it's not necessary you only use for large data. But for large data, these are also recommended. You can use these two services for any data below that as well. But uh, keeping the domain of only large data for this video, these services can also be used. Now, when to use what? Let's understand with the given specific use cases. If you have such use case where uh, you want to migrate data uh, from your local on-premise to cloud, or it works both ways. Uh, you want to migrate your data from cloud to your on-premise, and you don't want to take burden of uh, setting up all the mechanisms to monitor the transfer, how is it going, and, and let's say encryption while transfer. You may need to schedule the transfers, and you have a good bandwidth of uh, over the net internet connection. Uh, which can easily support uh, your data transfer either to and from uh, AWS in the expected time. You have that good amount of internet connection and you have file systems like NFS, network file share, FSx for different uh, type of operating system architectures. You want to use them and uh, transfer your data to AWS side of let's say EFS or AWS S3 or you directly want to archive your data into some lower cost storages for future use. Let's say S3 Glacier flexible archive. A data sync agent is installed on any virtual machine or any machine on your uh, on-premises and over the internet it communicates with AWS data sync service and there is what you configure where do you want your uh, data to be transferred or archived or taken back up. It supports various uh, end storages like EFS, S3 and FSx for different architectures like Windows file server, Lustre file system, ZFS, NetApp on tap. So if you have uh, such kind of uh, end storage needs data sync is the way to go. Now, second use case, it's an important one. Let's say you have an application which on the core depends very heavily on data locally stored. Let's say there are requirement for uh, very low latency data access and you cannot afford to have a uh, data access over the internet. And uh, th that's dire need of the application that data needs to reside on the locally accessible uh, fast uh, drives. But still for reasons like uh, obviously you want uh, your data to be securely placed on the cloud or um, you want to have this data on uh, your local system for your application needs. But parallelly, you need this data uh, to uh, run huge analytics as well. 
so in that case you cannot move your data from here entirely but yes you still want your data uh, on the cloud or maybe a part of data to be archived but uh, still some part you need to be readily accessed for low latency but that data as well you need on the cloud to run your huge analytics over that if you have such kind of use case this amazon s3 file gateway is installed on your on premise architecture and then over the internet it keeps on syncing with the aws s3 bucket all the encryption in transit and on rest is taken care by uh, aws s3 gateway so this s3 gateway is sort of a uh, gateway which exposes an s3 bucket uh, to your corporate data center as a local storage and then over the time on the background it keeps syncing that data with s3 buckets and on s3 side this is handled by aws storage gateway services and now the third and very critical use case these kind of use cases are seen by uh, clients requiring a huge data migration this is a choice where your own infrastructure fails in all possible ways to make the data transfer either your internet connection is not that good like uh, it may be good for your own application needs but when it comes to amount of data what you have and you want to migrate it it may take months and years uh, using that uh, internet connection to transfer over to aws your infrastructure is not uh, good enough for that or let's say even if you have good internet connection but compared to that your data is very huge you have petabytes exabytes of data so even a decent internet connection may take uh, multiple years even to transfer over to cloud aws has given a mathematical formula to give you an estimate how much time your data transfer may take it's a complex formula but uh, the highlighted parts you can see it uh, takes the input of uh, your data volume that's terabytes of data how much good internet that you have which takes uh, gigabits and out of your complete bandwidth how much network utilization you can give out for uh, data migration and how many hours per day you are good to spare uh, for this data migration that can give you number of days so this formula is a little bit complex i'll narrow it down to some materialized values you can say if you have 100 terabyte of data and 1 gbps of internet connection which is pretty decent if you fit these values into above formula you will get this calculation 100 terabytes and 1 gbps if you convert into uh, bits per second and considering you also have your application requirements so we won't be using full bandwidth of your network so let's consider only 80% of that we'll be using and if this process runs for all 24 hours it is going to take approximately 12 days to transfer your 100 terabyte of data with this calculation uh, some more idea you can get with this uh, generalized table you can see 100 terabyte 1 gbps we just calculated 12 days but as the size of data grows 500 terabytes let's say uh, you have 1 gbps connection it takes almost 58 days and if your data ranges between petabytes with 1 gbps it may take around two years and even if you have good internet connection of 10 gbps it still may take 58 days now if while calculation you see such huge timelines which are not affordable by you and you want it to be migrated uh, as early as possible or this table just shows up to 10 petabytes what if it is more if you have these kind of problems aws snow family devices will be well suited they come in three variants we'll come to that but first let's see how they work so for this you create a aws uh, transfer job where a physical device is prepared for you and shipped to you within one to three days when it gets to your uh, on-prem facility or corporate facility then you uh, prepare for the transfer it may take depending upon your data whatever amount of days it takes then the device is physically shipped back to aws facility it's ingested to your de uh, decided type of storage and then it is securely erased now aws snow family provides three different type of variants of these uh, physical devices aws snow cone snowball edge and snowmobile snow cone is a small device that comes in both hdd and ssd variants and these come in 8 terabyte and 14 terabyte of uh, different kind of storages now also make sure these uh, type of devices are not used in as a single unit uh, for most of the transfer requirements because you see like 14 terabytes and 8 terabyte comparatively if it, it is smaller but usually as per the need uh, 
let's say uh, it's about uh, 50 or 60 terabytes those kind of uh, customers use these devices in uh, more than one units specifically for them uh, the main constraint is the internet connection they might have very slow internet connection so uh, they might use this this is the smallest variant of uh, aws family then comes aws snowball edge where it uh, comes in uh, range of 80 terabytes to 210 terabytes they also come in different variants where uh, they are optimized for uh, storage they are optimized for compute as well uh, they also com come with a specific variant which has compute capabilities as well and then finally the gigantic solution for the data ranging between multiple petabytes or exabytes even where using the snowball edge also doesn't make sense uh, many times see in that case what aws has for you AWS Snowmobile. So concluding this session, we saw cloud vendors like AWS have solutions for all different sizes of your data migration. But we need to closely understand our requirement, what are the cutoff limit from uh, the day when you start the migration and the day when you want your data to be ready in cloud. How much time you are ready to spare and what cost you are ready to spare uh, for your data migration. Accordingly, some or the other service from the cloud will suit your needs. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked this video. If you really did, please subscribe to GK Code Labs. See you in my next video.